Hello friends, today we are going to discuss about medical certificate. I am Dr. Suresh Bhadadmat, Professor of Psychiatry, working at Nimans, Bangalore. In this video, I will be discussing about medical certificate, medical certification process, types of medical certificate, content and format of medical certificate, process of certification, drafting and documenting, issuing of medical certificate, general principles of medical certificate and finally, ethical and legal issues of medical certificate will be discussed in this video. Let's understand what is medical certificate. It is a written professional opinion from a doctor regarding a patient's medical examination, diagnosis, treatment and recommendation. It is a legal document and can be questioned in the court of law, my dear friends. Medical certificate is very personal, contains sensitive information. Hence, doctors and healthcare providers should respect the right to confidentiality. Let's understand this medical certification. Medical certification is a process of issuing a medical certificate by an authorized medical doctor. This process of certification encompasses receiving an application by the client, accepting it, knowing the timeline, how much we have time to issue the certificate, assessment, investigation, diagnosis, formulating the opinion, drafting and issuing the certificate. We need to understand this process of certification. Majority of the doctors make mistake in this process. Let's understand type of medical certificates. There are two important types of medical certificates. One is procedural based certificate and second one is on request certificate. In procedural based certificate, again there are two types. Legislation based and forensic based also called as medical legal based. In forensic based, it is criminal case related certificate, civil case related certificate and administration related certificate. On request certificate has been classified into three important. Sickness or illness related certificate, dysfunction related certificate and functionality related certificate. Let me remind you my dear friends, this classification is for academic purpose only. Here, the certification can overlap on each other. Hence, it is not a watertight compartment. This is for academic purpose. I have classified like this. Let's discuss about procedural based certificate. The first one is legislation based certificate under procedure. Here in legislation based certificate, this legislation enforces the registered medical practitioner to do the assessment and submit the court, submit the certificate to the court and it is the responsibility of the medical officer to do examination. Some of this legislation based certificates have been notified by Indian Medical Council in Appendix 4. These are the certain legislation such as Birth and Death and Disposable of Dead Body Acts, Mental Health Care Act of 2017, Right to Persons with Disability Act, Vaccination Act, Educational Act, Public Health Acts, Employee State Insurance Acts, PNDT Act, Civil and Military Matters Related Acts and various other legislation which are passed by the Parliament and mandates the doctors to issue certificates. Second one is Medical Legal Certificate or else Forensic Based Certificate. Although many a time it is also considered as forensic records. Invariably these records are documented. Opinion is given by the forensic medicine or a forensic psychiatrist and it will be signed by them. First one is criminal cases, especially in injury, assault, sexual violence, murder, postmortem reports. They come under this criminal cases. In civil cases, Testamentary capacity, impotence examination for divorce, medical insurance. Executive decision based certificates are like fitness to rejoin duty, unfit to job, change of job, change of place. Those comes under this executive decision based certificates. Let's understand on request certificates. On request certificates are three type. They are sickness based, dysfunction based functionality based. Sickness certificates are 
patient requesting for medical illness certificate, treatment related certificate can be asked or combination of both. Dysfunction certificate is medical leave or also disability certificate. Functionality certificate is basically a certificate asking to telling that he has become fit to join duty or else fitness for employment, fitness for driving, fitness to become a pilot, fitness to be in armed forces or possessing firearm. These are all functionality telling that the client is fit to do certain jobs. Now let's understand content and format of medical certificate. As for the Indian Medical Council Regulation 2002, there are certain formats have been given. As for the Regulation 1.3.3, a registered practitioner shall maintain a register of medical certificate giving full details after the certificate issued. When issuing a medical certificate, the RMP shall always enter the identification mark of the patient and keep a copy of the medical certificate. The RMP shall not omit to record the signature or a thumb marks and address at least one identification mark of the patient in the medical certificate or the report. Here, this was issued by the Medical Council of India on 16-4-2013 with regard to 1.3.3 regulation. This is how the format is there with regard to medical certificate. It is there in the appendix 2 of the regulation. It has three parts. The first one is the identification of the client that is the patient. Either you can take the signature, thumb impression can be done. Further, the doctor's identification is name, signature and license to medical practice number has to be given here. And finally, the format in which what is the illness, what is the assessment, what is the findings, treatment and recommendation, whether he is fit or unfit to duty will be commented here. Let's understand. The nature and probable duration of illness need to be documented in your medical certificate. The certificate may be accompanied by a brief resume of the case giving the nature of the illness, symptoms and duration. Whenever you issue a certificate, please keep a copy of the medical certificate. Let's revise and summarize the medical certificate content and format. First one is demographic details of the patient. Second one is identification of the doctor, his address, his medical license number, hospital ID, patient's ID, date and time, nature of the illness, presentation complaint, degree of incapacitation and diagnosis, exact period of leave, the date of examination, inpatient admission, discharge, duration of treatment, any recommendation, advice and follow up. Whenever you issue a certificate, please do take the signature of the patient on the either the register or else on the retaining copy of the certificate by the doctor. Let's understand the process of certification. As I mentioned earlier, the process of issuing the medical certificate is called as certification. It has eight important steps. First one is enquiry. Second one is determining whether the certificate to be issued or not. Assessment phase, observation phase, documentation phase, decision and drafting phase of the certificate, issuing phase, transportation or transmission of the certificate phase. Let's discuss each one of these certification process. First one is enquiry phase. In enquiry phase, who is requesting for the certificate? On behalf of whom they are asking certificate? What is the purpose of the certificate? Whether it is a new case or a old case? How much time we have to do the assessment? Is there any court order is there? Whom should we address this certificate? Is there any medical legal issue associated with this certification process? Who is the transporter of this certificate? What is your role in this medical certificate process? Moving to the second, determining whether to accept or to reject to issue the medical certificate. Here you need to know the patient related information. Is it a valid request? Is it the consent of the patient is present? 
or else some third party is asking to issue a medical certificate for somebody else? Is there any proper documentation of request is present? Is it a old case or a new case? Doctor related. Have you treated him earlier? Is it your old case or is it the first time he is coming to you? Should you accept? Do you have the speciality experience in assessing the area which he is asking? Do you have this expertise? These need to be answered and you can accept, reject or refer to somebody else who has the expertise in those assessment. Moving to the third, assessment phase. In assessment phase, based upon your professional discretion, you can admit or you can give the certificate on outpatient basis. In all old cases, where you are clear about the diagnosis and purpose, you can give the certificate on outpatient basis. However, if it is a new case ordered by the court or maybe from the executive order is there, please admit because you require time. You need to do detailed evaluation. You need to collect information from multiple sources. You need to ask for past treatment details, investigation, general physical examination, mental status examination, investigations. Any other information which is required to be collected can be done during inpatient stay. Moving to the fourth, observation phase. Here, you have admitted the patient. You will observe the patient in the ward. How is he taking medication? How is he cooperative in the ward? How is his interaction between the patients and other parties? Interaction with the staff nurse? Activities of daily living? How much is it dependent on other people for his activities of daily living? Functionality? Is there any excessive behavior? Is there any deficit behavior? Social interaction? Social behavior? And biological function need to be observed on daily basis over a period of 3 to 4 weeks. Process of certification. Point number 5. Documentation phase. You need to document the assessment. File all the investigation. Make serial observation report. Summarize your finding. Logically build your argument for your conclusion how to give the certificate and decision for making that you are issuing the certificate to be done at this phase. Moving to the sixth point. Decision and drafting the phase. Here, once you are going to make a decision, either it can be individual certificate board certificate or a team board means within the department you can form a medical board or else at the level of the hospital at the level of the medical college a medical board can be formed those members will be examining and issuing the certificate jointly or else individually you can issue draft the certificate take opinion from your seniors check for the format is there any preformed format? Is there to issue the certificate? Number of copies required? Address the official who is requesting for the certificate? Don't send the certificate by name. Date and time and signature or the signatures of all the person who has examined the patient need to be signed. Coming to the issuing phase. Verify the certificate finally. Follow your hospital procedure for issuing the certificate. Should it be sent through the HOD or through the medical superintendent or through the RMO or to the principal? Need to be known by you. And do follow those procedure. Or else you can submit the certificate directly to the patient or to an authorized member if there is an authorization letter. Take a signature on the retaining copy of the medical certificate whom you have issued. Check the ID. Verify the ID. Explain the nature of certificate given to the patient. And finally, transportation of this certificate. This certificate either if it is issued to the patient or to the family member, whether they are carrying or not, please document in the file. Suppose you are posting it. Take acknowledgement, register post. Document the dispatch number. If you are emailing the certificate, take consent. These are very essential. 
if patient carries the copy of the certificate, a, another copy can be directly posted to the relevant authorities independently. But however, before doing all these things, please do take the consent of the patient. Invariably, we call it as triple consent. What is this triple consent? The first consent is consent for assessment and evaluation. Second one is whether it will be issued by the board or an individual doctor. And asking for a consent, sometimes the certificate may go against him so that he gives consent for that also. And finally, dispatching the certificate to the relevant authorities' consent to be taken. That is the three important points of consent need to be taken. Now let's move into the ethical and legal issues of medical certificate. First and the foremost, Medical Council of India, that is current NMC, describes of punishment for issuing false certificate. As per the regulation 7.7, .7, if the doctor issues a false certificate, there is high possibility he will lose license to practice. What does the regulation say in 7.7? .7? Any registered medical practitioner who is shown to have signed or given under his name and authority any such certification or notification or report or certificate or document of a similar character which is untrue, misleading or improper is liable to have his name deleted from the medical register. So you need to remember this. You, you are not supposed to issue false certificate, fake certificate, tampering of the certificate not to be done. Omission and commission under the medical certificate, you have to be very clear. There is a possibility of proceedings can be initiated against you. Let's understand what are the legal implications for issuing a false certificate. This has been mentioned under section IPC 197. It is nothing to do with the medical certificate for any certificate for any person. Section 197 IPC clearly says, Whoever issues or signs any certificate required by the law to be given or signed or relating to any fact of which such certificate is by law admissible in evidence, knowing or believing that such certificate is a false in any material point shall be punished in the same manner as giving false evidence. If you issue a false certificate, it can be considered as a false evidence. But you need to know what is this? Using true certificate known to be false. Section 198 IPC talks about this. Using a true certificate known to be false. Whoever corruptly uses or attempts to use any such certificate as a true certificate, knowing the same to be false in any material point, shall be punished in the same manner as a false evidence. It is available and non cognizable offense, my dear friends. But I have mentioned in both the above sections about false evidence. Let's understand what is this punishment for false evidence which has been dictated under the section 193 of IPC. Punishment for false evidence means whoever intentionally gives a false evidence in any stage of a judicial proceedings or fabricates false evidence for the purpose of being used in any stage of a judicial proceedings shall be punished with an imprisonment either of a description for a term which may extend to seven years and shall also be liable for fine. So this is the punishment for false evidence my dear friends. Further, if the doctor is a government servant and he has issued a false certificate or he has tampered or else he has misused that certificate in such a time, the Prevention of Corruption Act of 1988 can be pressed against the doctor who is working in a government office or a government hospital. Similarly, various respective legislation such as Mental Health Care Act dictates issuing various certificates and also if he is done an illegal certificate, he can be punished from 6 months to 2 years with or without fine. Let's understand about the medical certificate and evidence in the court of law. Basically, what is the evidentiary values of this medical certificate? These medical certificates once issued should be produced in front of the court or else submitted to the court. 
once it is submitted to the court it will be testified by the doctor under oath this medical certificate needs to be cross examined by the opposite law of lawyer that means it has to be scrutinized which it should withstand the scrutiny of the opposition lawyer then only it will be evidenced as a as an evidence in the court of law let's discuss about the general principles of issuing medical certificate issue medical certificate for cases you have examined only however by the reason of being in a ex officio or else you are a hod of a department the previous hod if he had issued or seen a patient and now the patient is asking for a certificate by the virtue of being in certain position although you have not seen you may have to issue certificate on behalf of the previous hod but please do document that mentioning that previous hod mr so and so or the doctor so and so had examined and currently is retired hence i am issuing the certificate give medical certificate for 2 weeks only when you are giving for medical leave don't give for more than 2 weeks if you have to give for 2 week more than 2 weeks ask them to give only for 2 weeks and ask them to come for reevaluation after 2 weeks and then again issue only for 2 weeks that means for every 2 weeks you have to reevaluate the patient before issuing any medical certificate please do take a written request from the patient only if somebody else is coming for a medical certificate on behalf of the patient check whether there is an authorization letter if there is no authorization letter please don't entertain such application whenever you issue the certificate please verify the identity of the patient patient id card hospital id card and the medical records need to be identified physical presence of the patient is required to issue the certificate certificate must address the particular person avoid writing whomsoever it may concern please address to the authority who is requesting for the medical certificate issue medical certificate on the day for of your opd and date the certificate on the day you are issuing that is very essential although you have examined the patient 2 years back and the patient has come today to issue for requesting certificate issue the certificate on today's date mentioning that 2 years back on this date i had examined him that is the way to go invariably most of the certificate by rule of thumb it should be prospective however you can issue a pay for a medical certificate retrospectively if you had seen the patient in the past justify your medical opinion with factual information which is documented in the file with regard to severity of illness disability of the illness and functionality of the illness medical certificate is a legal document even if you print this certificate is not intended for legal purposes does not have any value the court will decide whether to consider it as an evidence or not please do mention diagnosis or provisional diagnosis in your medical certificate that is that is the time it will get value never give contrary medical certificate if a doctor is already given a certificate if you give a certificate contrary to another doctor invariably it will end up in the court of law avoid abbreviations avoid medical jargons in the certificate these medical jargons will play confusing role to the court of law fitness certificate when you are issuing know your hospital procedure can a doctor can individually issue this certificate or a medical board is required based upon the procedure of the hospital go ahead and issue the fitness certificate before issuing a medical certificate please do retain a copy of the medical certificate and take the signature of the patient on the retaining copy that is very very essential if there is a authorized letter you can issue the certificate to the authorized person please remember do not cross your specialty boundary if you are a physician don't issue a certificate with regard to surgery be professional in your certificate don't write such things which looks unprofessional 
I am issuing this certificate on humanitarian basis. This person is a very nice person. I know this person since past 10 years. Such things are not required. Issue the certificate for the period only you have examined. That is very essential. Do not tamper the medical certificate. There are some times when the patient you have seen in the OPD. A patient has come to your OPD, had a mild fever. You have seen him and given a treatment. After one month, you may say, you may come back and say, please give me a medical certificate. I was on leave for one month. Although you have not recommended for one month leave, he is demanding for one month medical leave. At this point of time, you have to be very careful. You have to tell him assertively, yes, I have seen you one month back. I'll be issuing certificate for that day only and I have never recommended you for one month leave or rest. That should be very clearly told. Suppose if you are recommending for rest, document that in your medical record telling that you are recommending for rest for only two weeks and he will be reassessed after two weeks need to be documented clearly my dear friends. To conclude. Medical certificate is a legal document. It can be questioned in the court of law. Know the type of certificate you are issuing and the process of certification should be known and followed to the spirit. Follow the principles of issuing medical certificate, my dear friends. Please do know the ethical and legal issues surrounding the medical certificates. This is all about medical certificate, my dear friends. If you have any questions with regard to medical certificates, Please do leave your comments, questions, suggestions below. Thank you very much for giving your valuable time. Stay safe.